Although both CO2 and H2 are triatomic molecules, okay, the shape of H2 molecule is bent while that of CO2 is linear. Yes, indeed. Explain this on the basis of dipole moment. Actually, see, you cannot see molecules very easily. It, uh, even a hundred years back when all these uh, discoveries were going on, this was a very difficult affair. Electron microscopes or spectroscopic methods can now give you some understanding about you know, the location of atoms within a molecule. But please remember, this is not easy. It's a difficult thing. So before people actually could measure and see those molecular structures, was there a method? Yes. And that method was actually the method of dipole moments. And how do we do that? First, let me quickly tell you what is a dipole moment. See, um, if you have a covalent bond, which is a polar covalent bond. See, for example, if you have a covalent bond between H and O or C and O, different atoms have different electronegativities. What does that mean? It means that they have different tendencies to attract the shared electron cloud or to pull the shared electron cloud towards themselves. For example, oxygen is more electronegative than hydrogen. That means oxygen has a tendency to pull the shared electron cloud more towards itself. If that is the case, hydrogen will develop a slightly positive charge and oxygen will develop a slightly negative charge. This is what we call as an electrical dipole. Oh, what is what is it? Take it easy. It is just a name. Two charges which are placed close to each other but separated by distance. Opposite charges, positive charge and a negative charge of same magnitude separated by small distance. This is called an electrical dipole. And how strongly this electrical dipole attracts or repels another electrical dipole that strength of repulsion or attraction is measured by a quantity which is called dipole moment. Oh, wow. How do we calculate this dipole moment? There's a formula for that. Dipole moment mu is Q into D. D is the distance between these two nuclei. And Q is the charge. Like you have Q plus and if you have Q minus, then you just multiply charge by distance and you get this funny thing called as dipole moment. And this dipole moment is a vector quantity. So if you have a polar molecule, yes, the OH and CO bonds are polar, yes, they are polar bonds. In these cases, oxygen atoms acquire minus charge and hydrogen or carbon atoms acquire slightly plus charge. Okay. So if you have, you know, a polar bond like this, the molecule also is expected to be polar. Yes, because I mean, if you have polar bonds, then the overall molecule also should be polar. But there's a problem. Carbon dioxide is found to be non-polar. CO2 is experimentally found to be non-polar. What does that mean? It clearly means that atoms of oxygen are arranged in such a way in CO2 that their dipole moments must be able to exactly cancel each other. That means they must be exactly opposite to each other. And if they're opposite to each other, then the structure would be linear. Yes, the structure would be linear. That's how we judge it. That's very simple. Of course, that's very simple. Why should it be difficult at all? The structure of CO2 is linear because if it is not linear, Dipole moments exactly will not be able to cancel each other and CO2 would not be non-polar. But CO2 is experimentally observed to be non-polar, which means that dipole moments must cancel each other, which means that uh, CO2 molecule has to be linear. Otherwise, if the oxygen atoms are not exactly opposite to each other, dipole moments will not cancel each other. They will add up partially. And that partial addition actually happens in water molecule. Why? It is observed that water molecule has a net dipole moment. Now imagine if water molecule had been like this, then dipole moments of OH, OH bonds also should have cancelled each other. Right? Like this. They should have cancelled exactly opposite. But it is very well known that they don't cancel. If they don't cancel, what does that mean? It means very clearly that molecule of HOH cannot be linear. It has to be bent. 
and indeed it is found to be bent. This is the argument based on dipole moment. But of course, please remember, this argument requires a prior knowledge, a prior experimental knowledge, if an overall molecule is polar or not. In this case, in this question, it was given, right? Uh, some data was given. Shape of H2O molecule and CO2 molecule was given to be bent and linear. Some data was there and we interpreted the data on the basis of dipole moment. This is how we did this.